So it goes like this. The other way that you can calm down by way of incorporating vagus nerve activation, and you can do that non-invasively, is the following. All right, this one, again, verified with people who are expert in these specific pathways in humans. And I know it might not sound neuroscientific, but believe it or not, the stuff that you hear, no pun intended, about humming and activation of the vagus nerve and calming down by way of humming because of the way it impacts the vagus nerve turns out to be true. However, and get this, you actually have to hum correctly. Now, you might think humming is just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is, again, mechanically through vibration, activating the branches of the vagus that innervate the larynx. And now keep in mind, some of the neurons in nucleus ambiguous that carry neurons that are officially members of the vagus nerve, they travel with neurons that are not officially members of the vagus, but they travel together from nucleus ambiguous to a lot of the speech machinery in your throat and in your mouth and with your tongue and your lips, okay? That's a discussion for an entirely different podcast. But it turns out if you view the hum through the perspective of that it's an H and an M, right? Hmm, right? That if you want to activate this vagal pathway to calm down, the way to hum correctly, oh, this sounds wild, but the way to hum correctly is actually to extend the H part, not the M. I talked to somebody who's expert in speech neurophysiology, and it's because the H part, the mm, is different than the mm part. The mm is slightly higher frequency. And actually, if you notice, if you do a, a, an extended H hum and then an M hum after, you'll notice that it shifts from the back and deeper parts of your throat which is where the vagal activation comes from, to sort of further up along your speech pathway toward your mouth and your lips. So just give that a try for a second. Maybe you have to do this in private because otherwise it'd be too embarrassing. But you, it's incredibly calming. I did this earlier and I was really positively surprised how, how well it worked. It's basically this. You're trying to get the vibration to move from the back of your throat down your neck into your chest and even into your belly and diaphragm. So it goes like this. If you want to know what it's like from a sensation perspective, think about gargling. Oh, this is getting crazier and crazier toward the end of this podcast. But indeed, if you look online, gargling has been proposed as a way to activate the calming aspects, so-called parasympathetic aspects of the vagus nerve. And indeed, when you gargle, you're using the back of your throat. That's the sensation. It's this vibration at the back of your throat. So when you hum, emphasizing the H part of the hmm and leaving off the M part, it's and you can actually move the vibration down into your chest. I find it's easier if I'm lying down. And when you do that, it's quite remarkable how fast you calm down. But give this a try. I know it might seem a little silly, but if you want to try and really deeply relax, this extended humming that you're trying to move down further and further from, say, your lips to the back of your throat, to deeper in your throat, near your Adam's apple, to your chest region, even into your uh, abdomen and your diaphragm, you notice that it really, really calms you down. This is also, it turns out, because I talked to somebody who is a singer, this is the way that singers often will start to relax in order to get into some of the deeper frequency notes that they need to hit with their voice. As you've probably observed, high notes sort of bring people up into their head and up, even if they're using their diaphragm, higher and higher and higher, whereas lower frequency sounds deeper and deeper. And it's just mechanical activation of the particular branches of the vagus that are able to drive this parasympathetic response. And if you notice, the hum is like all speech, an exhale. It's a long, slow exhale. So this is the third part. There's also a collateral activation, which is just neuroscience speak for activation of that deceleration pathway. When you do this humming at the back of your throat and down into your chest and into your belly, you're also getting the same effect that you get with an exhale, which is to slow the heart rate way, way down.